Welcome to Imperfect Life. I got a great project for you today. Today I'm going to show you how to make this super cute little tote with box corners on the bottom. So set aside about 20 minutes, grab a yard of fabric, and we'll get started. Okay. To make the simple tote, what you're going to need are four pieces of fabric. You're going to need two rectangles. They can be squares too. This is completely flexible depending on what you're going to use the bag for. Okay, the squares or the rectangles that I cut are 20 inches wide by 17 inches high. The other two pieces you'll need are for the straps. I cut mine at about 40 inches long by 4 inches wide. So you figure take the width you want the finished strip, strap to be, double it, and then add a half an inch. Alternatively, if you don't want to use your fabric for the straps, you can also buy this type of nylon uh, strap material, you can get it at, I saw it at Walmart, it was like $1.98 for a yard of it. Uh, if you don't want the fabric straps, you can just buy this and sew it on. Works just as well. Also, you want matching thread and then optional pinking shears. And you'll see why we want those later. Now, in order to get prepared to make the bag, I took my two rectangles and I folded a quarter inch pressed, folded another quarter inch and pressed. The reason I did this is that we're not lining this bag, so we're going to want to finish the edges um, to look a little more polished. Same with the straps. So I folded in the edge about a quarter inch, pressed it on both sides, and then I folded it in half lengthwise. Okay? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a seam in this top edge of the bag that we've pressed down, okay, just to finish that edge. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the straps and I'm going to do a seam down the outer edge, the open edge, and I'll do about a quarter inch seam allowance, and then we'll turn those right side out, okay? okay. So I've gone ahead and I sewed that top edge of the bag part. You can see that looks a lot cleaner. I also sewed the straps and turned them, my least favorite thing ever, and then I pressed them with the seam down the middle. Now what we'll do is we will attach the straps to the bag. It's easier to do it now before we actually sew the pieces of the bag together. The easiest way to do this is to take the width of your fabric, roughly divide it by three. Mine's about 20, so I'll go in about six and a half inches, okay, and I'll make a mark with a pencil. Okay, so it goes about 13 and a half, okay? And then you want to go down, I don't know, anywhere from three to six inches. This is going to depend on where you like the strap and how long you like the strap. I like my straps a little bit longer. I don't like them real short right around my shoulder. So I'm going to go down about five inches. Also, I made the length of my straps 40 inches. You can also make it shorter. Make it, you know, 30, 32, something like that. Okay, so just pin them in place there, and then we're just going to sew a little square along the bottom to secure the straps. Okay, and then you'll do the same thing with the other side. So now we have the two pieces of our bag, the front and the back, with the straps sewn on. Like I said, I do a little square, but you can do two horizontal lines. I would do more than just one, though, only to give the straps a little bit of durability. Keep in mind though, this is not a lined bag. So however you sew them is gonna show on the inside. So you might wanna just keep it, keep it neat. So the next step is we're gonna sew the two pieces together. So just flip one on top of the other. Okay, line up your edges. And it might be a little, um, there might be a little bit of bulk because of the straps, that's okay. Just line up the edges and pin to where the, the edges are lined up. So pin them in place, and you'll want to do about a half inch seam allowance down either side and across the bottom. Okay, so we have the edges of the bag sewn, and now we're going to do the boxed corners. Okay, as I mentioned in the beginning of the videos, the boxed corner is going to be a really simple step. We're just going to add two more seams here and here, and it's going to give the bag depth, okay, instead of it just being like this kind of flat tote thing. So what you want to do is you want to put your hand inside the bag and flatten that corner so that these seams are basically on top of each other, okay? The side and the bottom seam. 
And that is in part the reason why I didn't have you do a fold bag and then sew the seams up the side. I know that would have been easier. However, when you're doing your boxed corners, it's a really nice guide to be able to press these seams on top of one another. And then you know that your corners are lined up. Because if they're not, then it, it just doesn't work right. Okay, so you're gonna kind of maneuver your fabric so that your seams are on top of each other. Now, you can decide how much depth you wanna add. I think I'm gonna go down about three inches. Okay, the bag's sticking to itself. All right, there we go. Once you have the seams lined up, and you can pretty easily eyeball it, you can pretty much see, throw a pin in there, okay? And then you don't have to worry about holding it in place. The pin will hold it in place. Have your seams open, and then like I said, I'm gonna go down three inches, and you wanna do it from, the, from where the seam starts. Okay, you don't want to catch your seam allowance in there. Okay, so we're going to mark three inches. And then get a ruler or whatever straight edge you have handy. Okay. And draw a line. I'm going to do the other side. Normally I would skip this, but I'm going to do it again just so you can see it. Box corners are another one of those things I think people get intimidated by. You don't need to. They're really not that, um, not that tricky. I'm just gonna line them up. Okay. So we have that seam. It's not quite lined up. All right, that's better. And that seam. And the other thing is you want to make sure those seams are lined up for the length of, for the entire length, that entire three inches, we want to make sure they're lined up or else the bag will be off. Okay, they're lined up. Put a pin in it. Okay, and then measure down. three inches and make sure it's totally flat too okay get your straight edge and draw your line another check that you might want to do is to measure from the seam to the edge of your fabric Okay. In this case, I'm just under three inches. And then do that with the other side too, because it is possible for the fabric to shift just enough that the seams line up, but your, your one side's folded a little bit more. Go ahead and make your seam there, and you're gonna do the same exact thing on the other corner. Now, I've made those seams on either one of the box corners. And then what we'll do, and this is where I said, if you have pinking shears, uh, I'm going to go ahead and trim the seams with the pinking shears. The reason I'm going to do that is because, again, it is not a lined bag. So when you look in the bag, you are going to see the raw edges. So you can get about a quarter of an inch away. And you're going to cut this triangle off. Okay, so the pinking shears, shears are going to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing. Um, and of course, they always help to reduce fray on raw edges. Okay. And then you can go ahead and press these seams open. Okay. All right. So I've completed the finishing touches. I've pressed those seams open. I also put a little crease in the bottom of the bag. Uh, that'll come out soon enough, but just to get started. Using the bag, I did create kind of a crease. We turn the bag inside out, pop out your corners. As I was turning the bag, 
I realized that these straps were a little too um, floppy. So what I did is I went ahead and threw one more seam right along that top stitching we did very early on, just to secure them more in place. Another thing to keep in mind with these box bottoms is that the wider you make them, the more exaggerated the shape of the bag is going to be, okay? So this is gonna narrow, doing these box corners is gonna make the bottom of the bag narrower than the top, um, which is fine. I think that's a really cute look. It almost looks like a, like a garden-y type look. But just keep in mind that the, the wider you make those box bottom seams, the more dramatic that angle is going to be between the bottom of the bag and the top. So I think that's it. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, go ahead and give it a like. And feel free to subscribe to Imperfect Life to see more helpful tutorials. Thank you.